Hey friends, welcome back to Vinylize. I am Jarrett New, and today we're gonna to be answering a lot of your questions and comments about vinyl that you left for me in the last video. Now, getting into vinyl for the first time can be a little intimidating, so I hope this video will help clear up some of that confusion. And if you wanna find out more about all the different vinyl gear that we're gonna talk about in this video, I'll post the links down below and you can check them out for yourself. All right, well, we got a lot to cover, so let's just jump in. No, 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 we ain't got time for that spinning logo stuff. We gotta start answering these questions. Also, these are in no particular order. How many records do you have? I have somewhere around 200, and I know that's not a whole lot compared to other record collectors, but I believe it's good to be picky and you should only buy the best stuff. Do you have any Johnny Cash vinyl? No. Not yet, but I definitely want to get at Folsom Prison at some point. Are all Crosley record players bad, or should I just avoid the Crosley Cruisers? Warning, personal opinions. I would personally avoid anything with the Crosley name attached to it. Why don't you have Dark Side of the Moon or any Pink Floyd records? Cause Dark Side of the Moon is like 50 bucks and I've just been reluctant to spend that on a single album, but I'll get it eventually. What's the most wanted or valuable album in your collection? Well, there's actually a few. I really love my first pressing of the parlor trick, A Blessed Unrest, my Third Man Records golden 12 inch vinyl single of Carl Sagan, A Glorious Dawn, my rare copy of Perturbator, Dangerous Days, and last of all, Boren und der Club of Gore, Sunset Mission, the Pios Germany pressing. It's incredible. Do you collect CDs? Yes, I love CDs. I play them all the time when I'm in my car and I'm always handing out my friends CD mixtapes. Since I've been on an ambient music kick lately, I've been listening to a lot of Robert Rich music on CD and his music is incredible. Can I eat a record? I wouldn't recommend it. Did your parents collect records or did you start everything from scratch? They collected a few back in their day, but they got rid of them, so I had to start from scratch. What's the answer to life, the universe, and everything? 42. How many players do you own? I have a cassette deck, a DVD player that doubles as a CD player. I have a portable CD and cassette player, a CD player in my car, a tube TV with a VCR, and finally, two turntables, the Audio-Technica LP120 and another turntable that I'm gonna talk about in a future video. Do you have a monthly budget for vinyl? Not really, but I do have to make sure that I have enough money left over to pay my bills, that's unimportant. What's the best way to travel with records? By car or van or big truck, depending on how many records you have. Also, if you live in the South, keep the AC on and never leave your vinyl in a hot car. Also, I wouldn't recommend flying with vinyl. It's very risky. I want an affordable record player with a budget of 150 bucks. What should I get? The Audio-Technica LP60 is probably the best turntable out there for around 100 bucks, but if you want something that's gonna last you even longer, I'd recommend the LP120. What bands do you like that you haven't mentioned in videos like Tool, Nine Inch Nails, etc.? Well, lately I've been obsessed with, as I said, Robert Rich. His ambient music is phenomenal. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you should definitely check out his albums Perpetual, Nest, What We Left Behind, Calling Down the Sky, Vestiges, Lift a Feather to the Flood, and Trances and Drones. Those are all great thinking albums. Can different needles work with different turntables? Yes, absolutely. The cheap record players usually have ceramic needles, which can be replaced, but are of really poor quality and might ruin your records. So better quality turntables are usually gonna have this kind of setup, where you get a head shell, a cartridge, and a stylus. So you can swap those out if you want. What brand of speakers should I buy for my record player? Well, this is a very subjective thing, but I gotta be honest with you, I really love my Klipsch bookshelf speakers. They're really accurate, you can crank them up pretty loud, and they never get distortion, which is very nice. So if you want passive speakers, I'd go for the same ones that I have, the RP150M, but if you want active speakers, I'd suggest the R15 PMs. Do you think that Anima by Tool is gonna be sold on vinyl anytime soon? Man, I hope so. Do you think that older record players around the 80s had a better sound quality in comparison to the modern ones? Not really, because there were cheap quality record players back then too, so the decade shouldn't really be a factor. What matters more is the overall attention to detail, the price point, and the brand, because good companies make good stuff. Did anyone inspire you to start record collecting? Yes, Jack White. He's been preaching the gospel of vinyl for a very long time now, and he's the main person that made me realize 
that vinyl is awesome. How can I respond to people that don't understand the hobby? Yeah, this is actually a pretty common problem. A lot of people out there don't even realize that they still make records. And furthermore, they don't understand why anyone would get into this hobby when they could just stream music off of Pandora or Spotify or Apple Music. And honestly, that's the reason why I make these videos, to let people know that vinyl is still around, it's awesome, and it's never going away. So. I guess the best thing you could do is just take those skeptics to the record shop, show them around, and hopefully they'll realize that vinyl is a lot of fun. What's the best way to store 45 singles? It depends how many you have. I like to keep mine in a wooden crate, but if you have several hundred of them, you might want to look into cardboard boxes, like from Bags Unlimited, which you can then stack on top of each other. Other companies out there also make portable DJ cases, which can hold a few hundred 45s. What's the best website to use when ordering vinyl? Amazon eBay and Discogs. Which area of your house is best to store vinyl? In a cool, dry place like your living room, bedroom, or even closet, but definitely not your bathroom because of the humidity. If you could only listen to three records for the rest of your life, what would they be? Okay, great question. Boren Under Club of Gore, Sunset Mission, Sade, Lover's Rock, and Robert Rich, Nest, which is on CD, but I'm still gonna include it. Are you gonna watch the Emoji Movie? Nope. What's your opinion about old records versus the repressings? Honestly, I don't really care that much about original pressings or repressings. What matters the most to me is the quality of the source recordings and how that record is mastered. Will you ever get a gramophone? Maybe down the road, but I'd want it to be a real gramophone from around the early 1900s that still uses a hand crank with no electricity. That would be awesome. Do you collect eight tracks? No, I don't, but I don't know. I'm open to it. What happened to the video about your reel-to-reel -reel player? Okay, good question. So I was gonna make that video, but unfortunately that reel-to-reel -reel player is in very poor shape and it sounds like a lawnmower when I turn it on. And even after I got it repaired, it's still not 100%. So I'm definitely gonna make a video about that whole situation in the near future. How do you feel when someone picks up a record and touches the surface of the vinyl? I cringe. Hold it by the sides and the label, people. Is there a difference in sound quality if the record is made of colored vinyl? No, black vinyl and colored vinyl sound the same, but flexi discs and picture disc vinyl are gonna sound worse. Do you use an equalizer? No, not yet, but I would love to add one to my vinyl setup in the future. What are the best slash cheapest preamps you would recommend? Well, actually nowadays, a lot of turntables are starting to include the preamp inside them. So that's gonna be your cheapest option. But if you really want a dedicated external preamp, I'd recommend the Project Fono Box for moving magnet cartridges. What should I do if I really want a turntable, but I'm a poor student with absolutely no money? Audio-Technica LP60. As I've said, it's the best beginner's turntable for around 100 bucks. Last record you bought. The last record I bought was Black Sabbath Paranoid at Friends of Sound Records in San Antonio. It's awesome, it's Black Sabbath, of course and I absolutely love it. All right guys, well I hope I've helped some of you in answering your vinyl questions. I know I didn't cover everything in this video, but this video was kind of an experiment to see if you guys would like it. So if you did like the video and it helped you, do me a favor and smash that thumbs up button. And if you love music, join the vinyl army and hit subscribe because I'm gonna be coming out with a lot of great videos every week that you're not gonna wanna miss. Also be sure to find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. All my social media stuff is in the video description down below. And most importantly guys, have a great day and keep spinning that vinyl.